Why, hello there, Mirkwood and Rivendell elves alike. Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy, and in this episode of Sketch Show Rama, we are going to be drawing us some Elrond. And uh, so, uh, at least one person, uh, uh, a pixel warrior? Wait, pix pixelated? Oh, you know who you are. Sorry, I know it has something to do with pixels. But at least one person has noticed I haven't been posting very much lately, and that's because, honestly, I haven't been drawing very much lately. And I bring you guys videos when I've learned something new that I think will be helpful, and that usually happens when I've been practicing. So, um, so a lot of the more recent videos have been me just kind of having fun, drawing all sorts of stuff. And so I came up with this idea of drawing... Uh, uh, screenshots from movies. I've always thought that's a good idea because it's very impromptu. They're not posed because you'll catch them in between facial expressions and in between poses. And so I think it's a lot more natural than what you usually get. So I found this website, uh, what is it? Movie, movie-screencaps.com. And look, it just like seems to take a, I don't know why some didn't load, but it takes like a screenshot every whatever second or two of the movie and it's just all there available for you so I went through and found some and I was gonna go through the whole movie but then I realized there's enough content just off of that first scene where the elves are fighting Sauron uh, so um, so I decided okay let's just draw some Elrond let's keep it more focused and see what we can learn so let's see what am I gonna do here I'm using this program called pure ref which is pretty cool it allows me to put all my references there and uh, it's a little easier than having them all on here we have to turn layers on and off but you can't draw on it but what I'm seeing here is so that's the problem so what I'm going to try to do is this is an interesting shape right here I'm going to look at shapes mostly in this sketch o -rama. I'm going to try to try to focus on that and keep things loose so I'm seeing this forehead shape right here maybe I should turn the opacity thing onto the thing that's better I think that's going to be better for us, for our purposes today. All right, so let's try a couple different views. And I also really like what his mouth's doing in these, so I'm going to definitely do some studies on the mouth. And as in every Sketcharama, our goal will be to fill up this page with sketches. So let us, let's get down to business. So I guess I should zoom in on what I'm working with so we can, oops, so we can have the details okay so so I'm thinking right here this little area that's not too far and there's a little thing sticking out interestingly so that's almost like bum 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 coming down like this and what I'm gonna do is I'll talk to you about how when I do copying what's going through my mind because there are certain things that really help one thing is looking at the angles here's an angle look at that this angle that's actually a little more his, the angle on the picture is a little more steep. Um, let's look at the angle. See, there's an angle coming in like this. I'm going to put that right there. And I'm also looking at the space here. That looks about right there. And when you're drawing things from life and stuff, it's not always going to be the same like this is the same. But you have to look at proportions. How tall is it and how wide is it? So it's about yay wide. So maybe even a little skinnier and about the tallness. Maybe see where... See how this little point's right here? I'm going to use that as a reference. I know this is reasonably below, point here, maybe around here. And that's going to help me. I'm just kind of getting a feel for how everything fits in space. What's going on? It's like a creature in the bushes in front of me. Pretty loud creature. All right, that's weird. All right, and so we've got his hair coming down like this. It's hard to tell what's going on here. It's got, it seems to have some major sideburns. And I would assume the ear is going to be over here. And uh, his neck's... You don't see his hair. His hair comes down, it seems like this. Okay. And then, like, from here. And then, I'm going to try to get a feel for this, like, armor and stuff. Because that's something that would be good to learn how to draw. It basically seems to just be kind of things like that keeping it loose so let's not get into too much detail right now all right let's get his face so now looking at the the okay let's look at the angle of the forehead it's pretty much and sometimes I'll use like I'll hold my pencil up you'll see artists do this where uh, you know they'll hold the pencil up like this and then uh, 
kind of use the use the thumb so you put your thumb there and say okay that area I don't know if that makes sense so you're holding the pencil here's your hand this is your thumb that area is equivalent to you know the guy's head and then you put it move it over to your paper I hope that's a decent explanation but what I like to do is I hold the pen at angles so I'll hold the pen or pencil to get that angle and I'll hold it up I'll close one eye and see okay and then I can move it over and compare you know it wants to be at that angle so then I'm gonna copy it there same thing looks now I'm looking at the nose the basic angle of the nose is pretty much parallels that angle now that I've checked it out there's a little dip and then it comes out and then what about the angle of the bottom of the nose I'm gonna check that out okay and the thing is you'll see a lot of little bumps within these things so the his nose isn't a perfect straight line. You see there's one bump and then a little indent and then a little bump. If you look really subtly, it kind of goes like this. You know what I'm saying? That's a little bit of an exaggeration. But there's a little bump there. But when I'm choosing to make this angle, I'm not going to worry about that bump for the first line. I'm just going to go from this point to that point. What is that line? And then if there's a bump, I can decide, okay, around here, it actually comes out, goes in a little bit like that. You know, I can make those adjustments later. But the point is to find the major lines, long lines that are happening, and uh, find the beginning and end point of that line and get that angle right. If you can get the angles right and the length, that's it. Those are the two things you need to draw realistically, like copy something from life or from another drawing or anything. Angles and length. That's it. If you get the angles and lengths right in relation to each other, then you are gold. I think this is a little too long, but whatever, it's okay. All right, so let me. I'm gonna just kind of. I'm gonna try to speed up the pace a little bit and have fun with it. And I'm still thinking of the same things, but I'm doing it a little more in my mind. And only on like the tougher angles will I bother to use. Uh, I'm gonna make the this thing a little smaller. Only on the tougher angles will I bother to measure it. And if I was trying to get like a super photorealistic thing, I would measure a lot more, but I'm not. I'm just trying to study this, these things, see what I learn, have some fun doing it. Um, which reminds me, I'm actually working on one of the reasons I haven't been posting videos, or and like I said, I haven't been drawing as much lately, because I've actually been working on writing. I don't know if you guys know this, but I wrote a book called how to write your first book and have fun doing it. I think that was like in 2014 or like a while ago. And uh, I actually got to number one on the Kindle Kindle uh, like paid list as well as the free list. And uh, that was I think in December 2014. So it was a pretty cool little bit of success. I had a good time with that. And I think I have I could, I, I've been inspired to write another book in that series. And I think I'm going to title it How to YouTube and Have Fun Doing It. Because I've had a great time doing this YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, a bit, some, like, yeah, there's a lot of great things. Met a lot of cool people, helped some people out, learned a lot myself. Even if I had zero subscribers and zero likes or whatever, I still would have learned so much making these videos because of the, the, uh, the like, methodology I went into doing YouTube with. It's like, even if you get zero subscribers, it's, it was all about kind of using YouTube as a platform to, to, to test myself and to make sure that I'm uh, learning the things I want to learn, that I'm really making progress in my art. Um, and you could use it in any field, I realize. Like, that's a cool, and even like stuff like entertainment, if you want to make like a comedy channel, you can challenge yourself, okay, let me do a physical comedy thing. Let me do a comedy thing about this subject and challenge yourself to, to like be funny in different ways. Oh, let me try to try to do some jokes that are in the, in the vein of uh, my favorite comedian. Let me study his jokes and then kind of do my own uh, own version of his style or something. You know, stuff like that. So I think it's a really fun and cool method. And then it also has the plus side of uh, meeting cool people. Uh, helping build your brand and eventually you could monetize it in different ways and uh, your hobby God willing could become a source of of income you know you could if people who there are people who make their livelihood on YouTube so 
it is definitely a possibility. So I thought I would share the whatever wisdom I have gathered in these last four years and just kind of speak from personal experience and make a book about that. And I also have another book I'm working on, which is a commentary on the Tao Te Ching, which is a pretty interesting book. So um, that's a little different, though. Oh, no. Did it just quit unexpectedly? Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, good. Thank God. I guess I don't need to save it. It's just practice if I lose it. So I'm going to actually... You know what? Okay, I'm going to do the same drawing again. It's good to do the drawings. I used to do these drawings. I would do that face 20 times. That was my thing. I learned that from Sikra Yasin, from the from that Sikra, from uh, the YouTube channel called Sikra, S-Y-C-R-A. And uh, he calls it iterative drawings, where you do the same exact drawing multiple times. And you kind of notice what you did differently, try to do, some, do something better, etc., etc., so I am going to just take, I used to do that and it was really helpful and now I'm kind of less, I've been a little lazy, I haven't been practicing as hard as I used to. So uh, so let's just go ahead and draw the whole thing again because I was just going to, I like the mouth. I want to try to figure out that mouth. So now that the jaw, so like let's say this jaw is coming down here. Since this jaw is open, it's going to come down a little farther. Maybe something like that, I'm guessing. And it doesn't look like it's so much of an angle. It looks like it almost just dropped. Even though I know it hinges from here. I'm just going to draw what I see, though. Since I haven't really studied this, I don't want to make stuff up about the anatomy. Or the, the, the physiology of the jaw, the movement of the jaw. I don't know here. So let's just break this down into a simple shape to start with. And then I'll move. Because I just want to make sure it fits on the face. I haven't really drawn many faces with the mouth open like that from profile so let's just get everything laid in and then so I'm going to use this weird forehead shape that's one thing that can be helpful identifying kind of stranger shapes that are more distinctive and then using those to build out the rest of your drawing and the forehead for when drawing faces is a really good shape to look for it's kind of subtle you don't think about it but you can usually see someone's forehead and identify the shape it is immediately. It's going to be some kind of square shape with four sides. The question is, what angle are all those sides and this stuff? So that's a little, a little quick tip on drawing uh, heads and faces. So let's say the nose is like this, maybe. Let's make this brush even smaller. Okay, so what do we got going on here? The mouth is like something like this. So mouths, I've seen people kind of break down the mouth into this kind of shape. Do, 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 like a Pac-Man. Like a 3D Pac-Man. But it's a little, it's a little different, but it's true. It's like what we're looking at over here. Got something like this, and then let's say the lips coming over it. A little bit of a tooth in there. There's a lip coming yep, lip coming over here. A little bit of a another again, the rounded the tooth is gonna be something like this, but the kind of thinking of it as like a ribbon. I'm not thinking of individual teeth or anything, but just like a U shaped thing that flips like that. And I'm not even really thinking of the thickness, but then when you want to add the thickness you just kinda of go like that, I guess. You know, build it out. But usually you won't even see the thickness, and it's thin in the thinner in the front because the molars are thick. So, uh, so I think that's not that's not too bad. This mouth right here, what I've kind of. So let's see if I can uh, move it over here and, and still keep it looking decent. So we've got the lip going over like this, and it comes out like that. Okay, and then we've got. Shape like that, the tooth, the other tooth, I mean, alright, this is the kind of thing where it would be better to start a new layer and draw over it. Should I do that? No, it's okay, because like I said, I'm just studying it right now. I don't really, if I felt like doing a more detailed drawing, I would, but I'm fasting and I actually have got to eat iftar which is uh, when you break your fa fast for Ramadan 
breakfast from sunrise to sunset. So sunset is at 8 p.m. or like 8.07 or something around there uh, today and it's uh, 7.36. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I want to wrap this up and start getting my dinner ready sooner than later. And I've already been spending a lot of time just drawing these two faces. So this is pretty cool. I think it turned out pretty well. Here there's this thing, this thing. So I want to kind of turn to turn. And then this angle, so you're measuring that angle. It's kind of like this. And then it comes straight up, I think. Now, did I make the draw too wide for back? I think so. So maybe here, here, here. I think that's a decent. And that comes out from there. You have some sp scraggly hairs. These hairs again come down from both sides. The armor stops around here. Okay. I mean, so like you can't even, this doesn't make any sense to you, but to me, what I'm thinking in my mind is it helps me just to draw those really sketchy lines to think like, just to kind of remember how the armor generally lays and just to kind of remember, oh, the hair comes down like this. You know, it's not really like I'm getting very good at drawing the hair and armor by doing those quick lines. I'm not doing an in-depth study. But it's enough to just kind of in the back of my mind have something. Have a little glimmer of knowledge. Just to start. And then one day I have planned, you know, to come back and study it properly. So, um, so hopefully this has given me a little bit of a head start. Alright. Cool. So let's go ahead and draw another one. Maybe we can find one that's less of a profile view. I'll just see something. Okay, and like, well, let's see what we're looking at. We're doing pretty good. Probably gonna draw two or three more. Well, one more, and then maybe we could fit something at the bottom. We'll see. Maybe I'll just draw one more. Okay, so we've got the three quarter view. Oops. I don't know why that keeps us me mouth open maybe we should do another mouth open yeah let's do another mouth open that's so epic hey Ron I think he's like how do I with feeling <laughs> it always sounds like to me he's like with feeling shoot those orcs with feeling this is an art for it uh, yeah man killing orcs is an art for elves elves don't mess around man what is this? What is crawling around? What are you? Oh my gosh, hold on. Sorry I stopped drawing. I have to see what's been... You can't see it. Something... Something living its life. Living its life in the bushes out here. Okay. Cool, cool. Oops. Ah, Alright. <laughs> Who says that? If anyone can tell me the... The quote... Uh, which movie this quote comes from? <laughs> Some construction stuff behind my head. Uh, Alright. I think the food deprivation uh, madness is starting to kick in. So let's see. We got our center line. Okay. I made it extra long. This way you'd usually stop here. But since he's got this big old mouth, I'm making it a little extra long to fit it in there. So let's get that mouth in there. That's what we're working on today, I guess. So we've got uh, we got another one of these. Maybe something like that. So it seems like when mouths open, the top, the top tends to be at a more inclined angle, and the bottom at a shallow angle. Is that true? We'll have to do a little more research to find out. But let's draw a little face right here and see what happens if I just kind of stick with that that uh, basic basic under basic idea okay okay so let's compare that to let's say I did the opposite to compare and see if that's actually like a reasonable like observation if it's a if it's an, a relatively accurate observation what if I did the opposite and I made this shallow and that long Oh, interesting. So what I've just discovered here is that if this is higher, he's happier. If this is lower, he's sadder. 
And as you can see, this guy's pretty serious, so this is more on the low side in both of these. The, But let's say there was some crazy guy. Let's see, how would it look like? Maybe something like that. With the teeth in front. And the teeth here. And the tongue. You see what I'm saying? There, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I just, uh, that's actually a nice little, little clue. Little thing I figured out here. So I hope that's uh, helpful. See, so I think I gotta do, we're just start recording videos and be like, you know what, I'm gonna learn something if I do a study. And hopefully it'll help you guys out. And hopefully even just the idea of this, this is an interesting head actually, I'm gonna leave that there because it's intriguing. Um, and hopefully just the idea of like, oh, I can go to this uh, screen capture movie thingy, what is it called? Uh, movie screen caps, movie-screencaps.com. I can go there, look up like almost any movie and find plenty, tons of reference to study from. So maybe that alone is, uh, is good, you know, has made this video, has, has made this video valuable to you. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess I'm talking to myself more now than anything else, but I keep thinking like, well, I haven't learned anything, so I don't want to make a video or, you know, I don't have anything to make a video about. I don't want to make too many draw D and D's in a row. But I don't know. If you guys don't mind seeing draw D and D's one after the other, let me know because I'll draw D and D characters all day. <laughs> but I try to mix it up and keep things like, you know, I know that not everybody who watches my channel is into D and D, so, uh, so I'm trying to keep that in mind. But honestly, I probably even shouldn't. I probably should just do whatever I want, have fun with it, and err on the side of producing more videos than less. And I think that's going to be you know, one of the kind of uh, themes or recurring I or ideas for the for how to you do the YouTube channel book that I'm thinking of that I'm writing right now. Because um, especially when you're starting out, just getting videos up there is super important. That it would be like a number one goal. If you are not getting at least one video up a week, preferably two to four or five, then, uh, I mean, that's fine, but, like, you're not going, like, you're, it's unlikely that you're going to be seen, unless they're extremely high-quality videos, you know, if that's your thing, but it's a lot harder to create extremely high-quality, interesting videos than it is to create low-quality, as in, like, you know, I don't do any, like, this video, I'm not going to do any editing, I'm going to finish it, I'm going to say, Farewell to you lovely people on the video, then I'm going to export it and upload it. I don't, I don't take it into a video editor. I take stuff into a video editor when I need to speed it up, but I try to keep things minimal. As you can, you might have noticed, my this YouTube channel doesn't have a what they call a bumper, where, um, you know, where it says, like, Fantastic Anatomy with a little sound clip at the beginning. And actually, I kind of want to do that, and I probably will at some point. But, um, but not having a bumper is actually a huge hugely cool I mean like hugely helpful in saving me time because I don't have to edit that into every video and that will save it at least like if I was just gonna do the exact same video but put a bumper in I would have to put it in my video editing program put that bumper in and export it which would take well, probably an hour maybe a little less to do that and then upload it so it's gonna add like an hour to my time and I've never really had anyone complain about like production qualities or anything on this channel um so uh so you know like is it really worth my time or would it be better to spend that time practicing drawing or making another video i think probably the latter that being said it would be really cool to have a bumper <laughs> so i might do that at some point especially now that i have a faster computer because on my old computer adding just the bumper would have taken like two hours you know especially maybe even more if the thing kept crashing which it probably would. So now that I have a fast computer where I can reliably do it in like under an hour, then it's like, okay, well now it's more feasible to just do that. Um, especially since a lot of the hour is downtime too. I have to admit that like exporting it would be a good portion of that time. And uh, and that's not, I don't have to like sit there and watch it export. I just press the button and wait. So I could be practicing drawing while that's happening. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. I think we've done some cool drawings and... Uh, so just to recap, what have we learned? 
what have what have I uh, kind of re relearned and kind of tried to share with you guys today? Let's go ahead and try to figure that out. If my computer won't stop, we'll stop freaking out. Okay. So we learned to look for two things when copying a drawing: angles and length. So here, look at I'm just. This is this guy's forehead. That's another thing we learned. That the forehead is a great place to start when drawing the head. See, this is way too lean back. I'm going to look at the angle here. All right, maybe more like that. And then that's, you know, look at, that's a forehead will will give you the right the right direction. Which direction they're facing, up, down, left, right, et cetera, et cetera. And get some ground rule. What else did we learn? We learned about the mouth. That was pretty cool. How, um, so we've got the angry mouth is tilted up more on the top while the happy mouth or like angry yelling mouth happy yelling mouth is this is more towards the the top and what or this this is more towards the bottom the corners at the bottom the corners at the top so you'd have like just put in a nose right there a nose right there yeah there you go did we learn anything else leave an extra space when you're drawing the mouth well, long, you gotta make the face longer. Uh, Elrond is a pretty fierce, fierce individual. I think we've learned that. And, uh, yeah. Peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.